Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the second lecture of second module of this course Game Theory and Economics. Uh, before we start uh, this particular lecture, uh, let me briefly take you through what we have discussed so far in this course. Uh, we have been discussing strategic games, uh, we have given the definition of strategic games. Strategic games uh, is a situation where the players take their actions simultaneously, they have a set of actions. And uh, we know what are the preferences of the players. So, given the preferences of different players, we try to figure out uh, what are the outcomes which are possible and uh, then we shall try to see which will be the outcome that will prevail ultimately. <coughs> but that is sometimes later in the course. Presently, we are describing basically different sorts of uh, games, generic games uh, which are well known in the literature of game theory. Uh, so far we have discussed uh, the prisoner's dilemma game, uh, the first game that was and we have also given you uh, <coughs> many examples of prisoner's dilemma game which can be uh, seen in real world. Uh, secondly, we were discussing the second sort of game which was called battle of sexes. Or in short, BOS game. Uh, so, like in every game, it has a structure, typical structure, uh, this sort of game. And we have discussed the structure of the game before. It was like the following two players, one and two and their actions are B and O and the payoffs that they get are 2, 1, 3 are the payoffs. So, if uh, player 1 plays B, player 2 plays B, we are talking about this box here, here player 1 gets 2 and player 2 gets 1 similarly like the other boxes. Uh, so, these are payoffs and BB will be called uh, an action profile. Now, <coughs> the interesting thing about this game is that both of the players can see that if their actions are the same, that is if both of them play BB or they play OO, then there are some gains that the both can make compared to the case where both play actions which are different from each other. For example, if BO is the action profile or OB is the action profile, they get 0 which is bad for both of them. But they differ as to which cooperation, whether it is the BB cooperation or the OO cooperation, which is the uh, thing that they should do. Uh, I have given you one example in the previous lecture how this can be seen, this kind of situation can be seen in real world also. Uh, the story is the following that suppose there are two politicians, one is from uh, suppose Delhi and the other is from let us say Bihar and these two politicians belong to the same political party and this political party let us call it X is running an election, it is running an election, a nation, nationwide election. Now, and what are the actions? There are two players here, two politicians and what are the actions? The actions are that they can announce whether if the party is elected to the office, the party is going to spend money in Delhi or it is going to spend 
money in Bihar. Uh, so these are the two actions. Now the point is that these two politicians belong to the same party. If they take different stands, suppose this politician from Delhi, suppose this is one and this is two. Suppose one says that D is the action that is going to be taken, that is the party is going to spend money in Delhi and two says that <coughs> B is the action, that is he makes the announcement that if party is elected, the money will be spent in Bihar. Then there is a difference in their opinion and then the voters will be confused as to whether there is a conflict within the party, whether there is infighting you know, in, in this party. In that case, the voters will not like to vote for this party. They will maybe vote for Y, the other party. In which case, this X party loses and both these candidates are worse off. So, there is an incentive for both of these candidates, one and two, to say the same thing that we have an united platform. Either it can, can be DD. That is, both of them are saying that the money is going to be spent in Delhi or the money is going to be spent in Bihar. So, there are gains if this is the stand, these are the stands. But if the stand is DB or BD, then there is a problem, then the party might lose. Uh, though they can see that there is a benefit from taking the same stand, in case of DD, the first, let us call this the payoff function, but this is also true. Even if the stand is united, even then, uh, there is a difference as how the candidates evaluate these two profiles. The candidate from Delhi, he sees DD as better than BB because if the money is going to be spent in Delhi, then his voters or even his prospective voters who are not currently voting from, for him uh, will be tempted to vote for this party that is for him and therefore he is standing in the in that in that locality in that constituency will rise so uh, but this spending money only in delhi does not benefit the second candidate that much so that's why we have this one so this is like a battle of sexes game so, there is a there is an incentive for both of them to cooperate however they differ whether which cooperation is better uh, this this generic situation, this battle of sexes situation can be uh, seen in other cases also. Let us take a case of economics for example, let us say <coughs> let us say there are two companies. So, here players are two companies. One of these companies is an old company, established company and it has a product in the market which is sold well and there is a challenger in the market, a new prospective company uh, and this new company uh, since it is not too much well known in the market, it is not likely that if it is, if it wants to sell its goods on its own, the people will buy its products because people do not trust products which are sold by new companies. They try to stick to the products sold by the old company. And these companies are different, but they are thinking of merging. So, they want to merge and become a single company. The point is that uh, before the merger is taking place, these companies are using different technologies, suppose different computer technologies, Co these technologies are A and B. So, these are the technologies used by these two companies. Now, look what can happen. After the merger takes place, if they continue to follow these two different technologies, then there might be problem. 
because if there is single company and within the single company two different technologies are being followed there will be there will be problem of communication within the company which is bad for both the parts of the company that is currently there are separate companies so both these companies understand that if we merge then it is better that we follow the same technology uh, now problem is who is going to adopt its technology to the technology of the other company for example suppose one has been using a and two has been using b if suppose one changes its technology to b okay if it does not now follow a but goes to b then there is some benefit because they are, are now having a common technology which is the benefit but there is a cost part also because it has to uh, it has to spend some money to change its current technology to a new technology so there is some benefit but the, there is cost also but from the point of view of two it is completely beneficial because firstly it does not have to incur any further costs secondly the new technology uh, the common technology that is going to come about is its own technology so it it does not have to make any adjustments so in this case if the stand is that they are going to follow this bb technology then it is good for two not so good for one but these things are better for both of them better than either b a or a b because if there is b a or a b then obviously then there is a difference in technology and there will be problem of communication so here there is a again it is similar because people understand that there is some benefit from cooperation but they differ whether which whether this is the better cooperation or that is the better cooperation because there can be two kinds of cooperations so this is uh, more or less the battle of sexes we shall uh, come back to battle of sexes to find out what could be the solution concept that is what outcome will likely to prevail in this uh, in this kind of games now the third kind of game that we shall talk about today is called matching pennies <coughs> here also like the games that we have discussed before there are two players two in number one and two let us suppose and what are they playing <coughs> uh, each of the players has a coin a penny now obviously a coin has two faces the head and the tail now the game is the is of the following kind that at the same point of time they flash a part the a side of the coin to the other player now if these faces of these two coins which are with these two players match then the second player is going to give 1 rupee to the first player uh, so there might be two cases where the second player is going to give 1 rupee to the first player in and these two cases are both of them flash heads and if both of them flash tails in that case they are matching and uh, one player one is gaining uh, what happens if there is a mismatch for example player 1 flashes head but the player 2 flashes tail or the vice versa player 1 flashes tail and player 2 flashes head in that case there is a mismatch and just the opposite thing will happen that is player 1 now will pay 1 rupee to player 2 so this is the game so here uh, obviously there are two actions for each player i can decide either to flash head or to flash tail so let me call this h and t these two actions
and this is same for both the players. Both the players ha uh, have two actions each, H and T. And what are the preferences? Obviously, uh, player one likes that the faces of the coins match and that is best for him. And the second best is that they do not match, in which case he loses. So, E1 HH is equal to E1 TT, here we have a matching, but this is greater than, strictly greater than HT and which is same as TH. And for player 2, it is just the opposite. So, this is how the preferences look. Now, without much loss of generality, we can attach number 1 here, the first and minus 1 here. Why? Because uh, if they match for player 1, he is getting 1 rupee. So, this is plus 1. If they do not match, he is losing 1 rupee, which is minus 1. Uh, since uh, I could have used uh, 1 and 0 also. So, since the preferences are ordinal, it does not matter. So, like before, I can use a payoff matrix to show what is happening here. So, this is how it looks. Interesting thing about this game is that uh, in this game there is pure conflict. Whenever player 1 is gaining, player 2 is losing and when player, player 1 is losing, player 2 surely is gaining. This sort of games is also known as zero sum game. Because in each case, the summation of the payoffs that the players are receiving, they add up to 0. Uh, this is a situation of pure conflict. There is no chance of cooperation. Unlike if you remember in prisoner's dilemma or in battle of sexes, there was a chance that people could cooperate and get uh, better payoffs, both of them could gain. For example, in case of battle of sexes, uh, if the husband and wife go to separate places, from there they could dis they could go to a same place and both of them would have uh, make some you know positive payoff. For example, from 0, 0 to they can move to 2, 1 or 1, 2. Uh, or in case of prisoner's dilemma also, uh, if both of them confess it is 1, 1. But if they do not confess, it is 2, 2. So, from 1, 1 to 2, 2, it is not that one is gaining, the other person is losing. Both of them are uh, uh, can stand to gain. Here, however, <coughs> if we move from one cell to another, you can see that one person can gain, but at the cost of the other person. It is not that both of them will gain uh, at the same time. Uh, what can be the possible examples of uh, matching pennies? <coughs> One possible example is that suppose there are two companies. So, there are two companies and uh, what are the actions? Actions before I tell you about the actions, uh, what, what about the description of the companies? The, there is a difference between these companies in the sense that the first company is an old company, it is an established company. 
So its products have a reputation in the market. When people see the products of the first company, they know that the product is good. Whereas the second company is a newcomer, its products are not known to the people. So uh, if the second company just launches its products on its own without bothering about anything else, it's likely that it's not going to get a lot of customers. Now, in that case, what is best for the second company? Then the second company will like that its products look like the first company's product so that the cost customers are a little bit confused whether it is coming from the first company or the second company. I'm, I'm assuming that the people when they buy their products do not look very carefully as to which company. They just look at the appearance of the product and if the appearance, if the color looks like the same, the design looks the same, then they might as well buy the products of the other company. So in that case, it is good for the second company because it is trying to steal the reputation of the first company. So uh, for the second company, it's it, it will like the case where the, they are matching. It's like second company is less, like the first player. Uh, they are la launching their product without knowing what the product of the other company will look like. But if the products look like the same, then the second company is benefiting because it is basically taking a part of the reputation of the first company's product. However, <coughs> since first company's products are not being sold at the cost of the second company's product, first company will lose. So for, from the first company's point of view, it will like that the appearance of these two companies' product, they are different. Because if they are different, then the company can you know, tell the uh, customers very openly, look, this is how it is different. This is my product. But if they look like the same, then it might be difficult for the first company to tell to the customers how different they are. So this is a, a, one case of uh, example of matching pennies. So I can write these actions as the following appearance of products and suppose there are two appearances A and B so uh, so here preferences are the following If the, prefer, the, if the appearances are same, then company 1 gains, here company 1 is the new company, whereas 2 is the old company, established company. So from 2's point of view, it is just the opposite that the appearances are chosen to be different. So the rest of the story is like the matching pennies. Uh, I can give you another example from suppose cricket and again to uh, make the story simple. So there are two players and the players are the bowler and the batsman. And what are the actions? For the bowler, he has two actions. Uh, bowling a fast ball and suppose bowling is slower. Okay. 
what about the batsman well batsman can do two things either he can play according to the anticipation if the ball is fast or he can play according to the anticipation if the ball is slow so the play according to fast ball or play according to the expectation that the ball is slow now see again it is like the similar case of matching pennies uh, if the this things match that is bowler is bowling a fast ball and the batsman had anticipated a fast ball and has played accordingly then who is the benef benefit who is benefiting the batsman is benefiting because he has correctly anticipated then maybe the, the ball can go according to his wishes the batsman's wishes however if there is a mismatch if he had expected a slower ball and the ball is fast then there might be problem for the batsman he may get out in that ball so in that case if there is a mismatch between what the bowler is doing and what the expectation of the batsman is and what his action is accordingly if there is a mismatch it is the batsman who is losing and it is the bowler who is gaining so here the batsman is like the player one matching pennies why because if it's a match then he is gaining whereas the bowler is like the second player in the matching pennies because if there is a mismatch then the the bowler is gaining <clears throat> let me give you a uh, one last class of games and then we shall move to the next section and this game is called the game of stag hunt so the description of the game is as follows that there is a number of players hunters who have gone to a jungle to hunt a stag stag is a male deer uh now so players here are suppose in general there can be i can talk about n players and what are the actions that they have n players that is n hunters what are the actions that they have well they can according to the plan pursue the stag so one action is tag uh we shall call it s however here the story becomes a little interesting is that when they are pursuing the stag all of them together then there is a temptation the temptation is that there is a hare which will pass them by and they could as well catch the hare instead of going after the stag but if even one of them goes after the hare he will be able to catch the hare and he will get some benefits because he is getting the hare but for the rest of the hunters who have been trying to get the stag they will get nothing so my action i am a hunter if i go after the hare it is detrimental to the benefit of the other hunters so that is the story so the hunters each of the hunters has two actions to follow one is pursuing the stag which is s or they can choose to go after the hare there are in there are um, maybe n number of hares in the jungle also and each of the hares will tempt one player so there is no shortage of hares now what are the preferences this is important the preferences are as follows that if all of them concentrate only on the stag then they will catch the stag 
and what is the amount of stack that they get if there are n number of players they get one one nth of the stack this one nth of the stack is better than one here so if all of my friends are pursuing the stack only uh, and I also pursue the stack, I get one nth of the stack, that is better than the case where I do not think about my friends and I just go after the hair, which is a worse outcome. I get the hair, but it is not preferable to the stack, to the one nth of the stack. So, uh, since what we are doing is to construct uh, payoff matrices because in payoff matrices it is easy to see how the game works and payoff matrices can be constructed if we have a 2 by 2 game, 2 by 2 means 2, I have only 2 players, of course if the players have more than one action that can be done. But if I have 2 players it is easy to show this in terms of a payoff matrix. Uh, so I shall take for the timing a 2 player case. And the preferences are the following that from players one point of view best is SS because in that case he is getting half of the stack which is better than getting a hair. Now SS is better than what? SS is better than if he gets a stack which is the second best sorry if he gets a hair. So if he gets a hair what can be the possibilities when he gets a hair? He goes after the hair, other person goes after the stack. In that case, he will get the hair. So, this is the second best. He will get the hair in another case also, which is that both of them go after the hair. Here, no, nobody is you know pursuing the stag hunt. But there is a last possibility and which is the worst for him. That he is still pursuing the stag, but his partner has gone after the hair. In that case, he is getting nothing <coughs> because without your partner, he cannot catch a stag. <coughs> so, this is the preference pattern. For player 2, it will be uh, similar. The last, the, the worst possibility is that he is pursuing the stag whereas he is not able to catch it because the other person that is person 1, player 1 has gone after the hair. <coughs> so this uh, I can attach number to this basically 3 numbers I need. So uh, 0, 1, 2. So this is how the game looks. In this game, uh, interestingly, uh, it can be seen, this game can be seen as a variant of the prisoner's dilemma game. Uh, how can I say that? Uh, in the prisoner's dilemma game, if I draw that prisoner's dilemma game or let us draw the uh, arms race game, which will be better which is like the prisoner's dilemma game of the same uh, pattern. So here in the in the arms race game, there were two actions available to each player, each country. 
one was to build the nuclear bombs n or to refrain which is r if it is better for both of them if they refrain and it is worse for both of them if they go and build nuclear arms because it costs money. Uh, the other if I build nuclear arms but the other person does not it is good for me and vice versa. Now why I am saying that this this first one the stag hunt game can be seen as a variation of the second one. You see that in the arms race game had it been the case that if the other fellow is not building nuclear weapons okay, then I also do not build nuclear weapons and if I do build nuclear weapons that in fact is worse from my personal point of view also. So, it can be seen like this that if the other person is refraining and I build nuclear weapons then what do I get? I get suppose uh, 2 suppose 3 by 2 all right. What about the other person? he is not arming himself <coughs> so he is getting suppose zero okay now you see now here it is more or less like the stag hunt case because here also uh, this 2 2 that is where none of them is building any nuclear weapons that uh, that is RR is similar to the case where both of them are going after the stack and none of them given the other fellow is uh, going after R, going R has an incentive to play this N. And here also similarly if the first second player is uh, going after the stag the second the first player has no incentive to go after uh, hare because if he goes after the hare he is getting one but if he still if he pursues the stag he gets two. It is the comparison like two and three by two three by two is less than two here one is less than two. So, uh, depending on people's preferences, how much they prefer the case of a peaceful world, peaceful world means RR. Uh, if I attach too much importance to that situation where none of us uh, is building nuclear weapons, if I attach more importance to that, to the case where I am building nuclear weapons, whereas the other friend, my friend is my the other country is not building nuclear weapons, which is giving me 3 by 2, and 3 by 2 is less than 2. Uh, this can be seen similar to the stag hunt. So, stag hunt can be seen uh, as a variation of preferences compared to the prisoner's dilemma case. So, this is more or less about the different kinds of games that. The, the the basic four kinds of games we have discussed. Uh, now the question is, if these are the situations, the main main important kinds of situations that one encounters, then one may ask the question: In each of these games, there are four possibilities that can occur. Four action profiles we can talk about. Now, which action profile will actually prevail? For example, if there is a prisoner's dilemma situation, will the prisoners confess both of them? Will both of them not confess? Or is it the case one of them will confess, one of the, uh, the other prisoner will not? And if there is such a situation, then which one of the prisoners will confess and which will not? So, uh, we want to say something about which outcome will occur or likely to occur in each of these games. And what we do now is to explore this thing and this 
idea that which outcome will actually occur is known as the theory of this is called a solution concept. And we shall start with uh, the most well known solution concept which is Nash equilibrium. Uh, so, Nash equilibrium the name comes the name comes from the name comes from John Nash who proposed this idea of Nash equilibrium back in 1950 <coughs> and it is a very powerful tool to explore different kinds of games. So, what is the story? Uh, before going to the story first let us remember that in this uh, entire discourse about game theory, we are going to assume that the players behave according to the theory of rational choice. And what is this theory of rational choice? It says that each player <coughs> will take that action which is best for him according to his preferences. Now, in game theory the story is a little bit complicated because what my best action is also depends on what actions other players are taking. It does not merely depend on my own action. Uh, let me give you one example. The idea is simple that suppose in battle of sexes game, this is the structure of the game. Now, when one decides which action he will take whether B or O which is best for him, it depends on what 2 is doing. For example, if 2 is playing B. Uh, what is best for 1? Then for 1 B is best because if he plays O he gets 0 which is less than 2. On the other hand if 2 plays O one's best action is no longer B. Now one's best action is also O. So what is best for me uh, depends on what the other players are doing. Now so if I have to say that look in this game this particular outcome will prevail then for that outcome to prevail it must be the case that what each player is thinking his best action is that should also has that should depend on what the other players are also doing. Now if I have to say that this but suppose I say that BB is going to be the actual outcome that will prevail in the game. Now, why should B, B, B be the actual outcome? B, B will be the actual outcome if one plays B. Now, why should one play B? Because one may think, one may believe that two will also play B and that is why one will play B. So, this depends on belief of players regarding other players action. So, if, if a particular si situation like B B has to occur, it must be the case that players have beliefs regarding each other and those beliefs must also come to be true. For example, suppose I believe one believes that player 2 is going to play B and that is why he plays B, but in at the end of the day player 2 does not play B, player 2 plays O, then what will happen is that this outcome will occur, 0, 0 will occur. And if that is the outcome that will occur, then this outcome cannot sustain for a long time, because at this play of the game one has learned the lesson that 2 is not going to play B. So, in the next play of the game, whoever the person in one's place is, that person will not have the same kind of belief that this player one had. 
so in case of Nash equilibrium two things are important one is that theory of rational choice as I have said and the second is that beliefs of people regarding other players action are correct. If the beliefs are not correct then there is a problem as I have said just now that if I believe that if I believe player 1, 2 is going to play this and therefore I play this but in fact player to place this then I get this one which is worse than what I could have got here. So at the end of the game it must be the case that what my belief was at the start of the game is proved to be true. If this does not happen then what action I took before was not the best action. And in this idea of Nash equilibrium we are going to invoke the idea of steady state that if the players are taking their action then for none of them there is a tendency to move away from that action. So this is the idea of basically equilibrium. In economics we use the idea of equilibrium often to describe a situation of rest, a state of rest. So here it is a state of rest in this Nash equilibrium also. What we are trying to describe is a state of rest in the sense that given what I started with my expectations are fulfilled and therefore my, since the, my, my expectations are fulfilled therefore I do not change my action in the next period also. Now from this it might appear that what I am trying to say is that player 1 remains the same, player 2 remains the same and they are playing the game over and over again. Now that is a wrong idea to, to that is a wrong way of conceive the game. What we are suggesting is the following that there is a population of player 1s and there is a population of player 2s. So there is a large population from which any player can be picked up and he or she can be put in player 1's place. And there is a big population from which anyone randomly can be picked up and put in player 2's place. And they play the game with each other. Now whenever some particular player is picked up and he is asked to play the game with the other player, suppose player 2, then it is not the case that the, this player, player 1 suppose, he has come, uh, he has dropped from the sky. He has had some experience or he has seen other players playing the game before. So, and he knows what are the actions which are typically followed by this player who is in player 2's place. And since he has seen what are the actions that are uh, followed by player 2's place and those actions are steady actions, like the, those actions are being repeated over and over again. And that is why he forms a belief that when I am picked up to play the game, the same action which has been played by player 2 before or the likes of player 2 before will be repeated. And in the, if that action is repeated, he is taking his action according to that expectation. And similar uh, thing can be said about this second player also. Second player, he has seen the play of the game in the previous times. And he has seen that whoever is in player 1's place, he has played a particular action. And therefore, player 2's, player 2, according to the rational ch choice, takes that action which maximizes his payoff given what he expects from player 1. So, it also means <coughs> that the expectations. are formed from 
experience and expectations are coordinated. What I what I mean by the phrase that expectations are coordinated is that suppose one takes action A believing two to take action B. Okay. So, given player two takes action B, A is best and this is true from player two's point of view also. So, that is what is meant by coordinated. Player 2 takes B expecting that same action A will be taken by 1. So, they these two actions are basically reinforcing each other. These two actions are reinforcing the expectations of both the players and if there are more than two players there I can say that the actions of each of the n players are basically reinforcing the expectation of each of the players. Uh, so, the equilibrium notion that we have can be seen is a steady state stable outcome. Why it is a steady state? Because given what the other players have been doing, I form my expectation and I do my best and that basically reinforces the expectation of other players and they continue to play the same action. So, this happens for each and every player and that is why this state repeats itself over and over again. So, realistically if I have to say this, it is like a social convention. So, other people have been other people have been behaving in a particular way. So, as an individual I believe that in future also they will continue to believe, behave in that way and I take my action according to that and that action in fact reinforces other people's belief that my actions have been repeated over the years and so the same set of actions is being repeated as a social convention. Uh, I can give you one example. <coughs> Take the case of uh, traffic. So, uh, let us suppose that there is a road and there is a place A and there is a place B and uh, there is a left side of the road and there is a right side of the road from this B's point of view. Now, if any person wants to go to A, he can take either of two actions, either he can take the left side of the road or he can take the right side of the road. Uh, but what we generally do in countries like India is that when we go to the road, we generally take the left side, we generally do not take the right side. Why? Because of our experience, because we have seen that people when they go from this side, this from B to A in this direction they follow the left side and when people who come from A to B, they take the right side, their left side that is my right side. In And if that is the action that has been uh, followed by everyone, what is best for me? If I want to go through this road, this side that is the right side, my right side, I will collide with the vehicles or people who are coming from this side. So, that is not a very good idea. Whereas, if I follow the left side, all these vehicles will be moving this direction. So, I will also have some space to move in this direction and that is best for me. So, this idea of uh, this is an idea of social convention people learn from their experience people observe other people other people's be uh, behaviors and they calibrate their actions according to those behaviors. <coughs> and. Uh, there is no nothing sacrosanct in this behavior as we can see because 
in India, it might be that people are following the left side of the road, but in countries like America or many European countries, it will be just the opposite. So, they will go like this and the traffic coming from the side A will be coming towards my left. So, there is nothing sacrosanct with this equilibrium or this equilibrium, both may prevail it depends on what is the con what has been the convention and given the convention everybody is doing his or her best so before i close today's class let me just go over what we have seen in today's lecture uh, first we have talked about two other generic sorts of game in the same thread of discussion that we have been having from the last class these are uh, one was <coughs> matching pennies and the other was uh, stag hunt and uh, we have seen that there are some similarities and differences of matching pennies with what games we have studied before. In matching pennies the it is a completely conflictual game, uh, the, there is no scope of uh, the players cooperating with each other and being better off, uh, their interests are directly diametrically opposite to each other, that is one difference and they, these sorts of games are often called zero sum games. <coughs> In stag hunt we saw that uh, people can have two sorts of situations uh, which are, which are best for them in the sense that they may both go for stag or they may go both go for hair. Uh, but going for stag is better than going for hair, but even in that case uh, going for stag uh, may not prevail. For example, If I believe, one believes that the second player is going after here, he is going to go after here. So, uh, though both going after the stag is better. So, that is what we have seen. And we have also seen that this can be seen, this stag hunt can be seen as a variation of the business dilemma game. And lastly, we have used the, we have introduced the concept of Nash equilibrium. We have seen that it has two important components, Nash equilibrium. First is that it uses the theory of rational choice and secondly it must be a situation where the beliefs of the people regarding other people's actions, they must come true, they must be correct. And if that is the case, then Nash equilibrium gives us a kind of social convention. It is a set of actions which are, it's a, which is repeated over and over again and nobody has any incentive to deviate from that. We shall continue with this discussion in the next class. We have three questions here. Give a description of the matching pennies game. Why is it called a strictly competitive game? So, matching pennies game, uh, let me specify the three important components of any strategic game. There are two players, and action of each player either to show head or to show tail to the other player. Uh, from a, a penny, that is why it is called matching pennies. And thirdly, preferences, let us talk about preference of first player. If the coins match, that is best for him, and he gets the same payoff in both these cases. Whereas, if they do not, that is what he does not like that is if uh, HT occurs that is the first player is showing H heads, the other player is showing tails uh, or vice versa then the first player is worse off the, the coins are not matching in this case. So, it is uh, it can be shown in terms of this payoff matrix again. Uh, 
so this is how it looks like. Why is it called a strictly competitive game? It is called a strictly competitive game because gain by 1 is same as loss by the other. Second question provide real life examples of matching pennies game. Okay, example of matching pennies game. Take the case of a batsman and a bowler. And suppose the action of the bowlers are the following bowling a first ball or bowling a slow ball. And what are the actions of batsmen? Either to play a first ball or to play a slow ball. And let us assume that after the bowler has delivered the ball, the batsman does not have any time to, to change his decision. So, he makes up his mind before the ball is bowled and goes through the motion. Now, what could be the outcomes in this case? If the action of the bowler, so this is bowler suppose and this is the batsman. If they match with each other, then the ball batsman is gaining because he can anticipate it correctly. Whereas, if the uh, batsman is not anticipating the ball, uh, he, is an, he is playing a shot for a first ball whereas, the ball is not, not a first ball, then the batsman could get out. So, this is the case where the batsman is at loss, oh, sorry this is, this is the bowler and this is the batsman. So, uh, if the first ball and play first ball match, then the batsman is gaining 1. <coughs> uh, last question describe stack hunt game, explain the, ga uh, explain the game, how the game could be seen as a variation of the prisoner's dilemma game. So, in the stack hunt game, we have 2 players, 2 hunters they can go either after a stag or they can go after a hare and how the preferences look like it is given by this payoff matrix if both of them go after the stag they get 2h if either go after the hare uh, they get the hare but that is worse However, if someone goes after the stag he and the other does not go after the stag then he is worse off. So, this is how it looks like. Uh, what is the similarity with the prisoner's dilemma game? The similarity is that uh, compared to this cooperative outcome this is like you have this NCNC outcome in prisoner's dilemma. But in prisoner's dilemma if someone deviated from this not cooperation uh, then he would have got more. So, this would have like 3. So, there was a tendency to deviate uh, to, to ditch your partner, but here since this 1 is less than 2 uh, this tendency to deviate from this cooperative outcome is not there. So, that is the difference, but otherwise the game is similar to the prisoner's dilemma game. Thank you.